This video will review volume elements for integrating functions in multiple dimensions, sometimes not in Cartesian coordinates. Okay, so sometimes you might see the following kind of notation. So frequently we have integrals that come up in physical chemistry, which might look like the integral from negative into infinity to infinity of f of x integrated with respect to x. So instead of writing the integral from negative infinity to infinity, perhaps I or other authors will get lazy and instead just include this little subscript R here inside the integral symbol. And that's just a, an indication to integrate over all real numbers. This kind of script R here is the symbol for the set of all real numbers, which just means to integrate from negative infinity to infinity or over the entire possible domain of this function of this variable. So if I'm integrating over all real numbers there, then I'm going to have what's called an all space integral. I'm integrating over all of space for the given variables of my function. And then of course, our dx there that represents some infinitesimal change in x, some very, very small change Remember that we defined integrals in terms of the area under the curve where this function is defining some curve. And we approximated that as a bunch of rectangles where the width of those rectangles was this dx. And as those rectangles got infinitely small, they approached uh, in the limit of an infinite number of rectangles this function, which we call an integral. Okay, so if we want to integrate over all space in multiple dimensions, if we have a function of x and y, then we just do an integral from negative infinity to infinity in both x and y. And sometimes you might see this in indicated as a single integral over r squared, meaning we're integrating over all real numbers in two dimensions, dx and dy being the two dimensions. So you know that by the fact that there are two uh, there are two little infinitesimals there and two, uh, two sets of real numbers to integrate over for f of x, y. And then we have the analog in three dimensions, x, y, and z, negative infinity to infinity and all of those. And of course, that would be r cubed. <clears throat> and sometimes you might also see the no notation d cubed r, where this r just represents the vector x, y, z and represents some cubic volume element because in three dimensions uh, these infinitesimals multiplying times each other in two dimensions dx dy that would form a square and in three dimensions dx dy dz or this d cubed r that would form a cube okay so that is in cartesian but sometimes it's much easier to express uh, functions as a function of polar coordinates in two dimensions or spherical polar coordinates in three dimensions. So instead there, instead of integrating from negative infinity to infinity in X and Y, as we saw in earlier videos on different coordinate systems, we'd integrate theta from zero to two pi, and we'd integrate R from zero to infinity, both the ranges of those two variables. But our volume element is a little bit different here. Our volume element, instead of being dx dy, is r times dr times d theta. So there's an extra factor of r there, and that's what we're going to discuss in a minute. Similarly, if we integrate uh, with respect to, if we integrate over all space in three dimensions for a Cartesian function, that's dx dy dz, our little cubic volume element. And the analog of that for our spherical polar coordinates would be 0 to 2 pi in phi, 0 to pi in theta, and 0 to infinity in r. But the whole volume element there is r squared sine theta dr d theta d phi. Okay, so now our task is to explain just why the heck we have these extra terms popping up in polar and spherical coordinates for these volume elements. All right, so in two dimensions in Cartesian, we have x, we have y, and our volume element is dx times dy, which is just the little region from x to x plus dx 
from y to x plus dy makes sense that that's a rectangle. These are rectilinear coordinates, we would say. Okay, so if we try to do, if we try to build a similar kind of rectangle for uh, our, our infinitesimal integration in, in polar coordinates, what we find is, as we're increasing here from r to r plus dr, well, that's just a that's just of length dr, so that makes sense. That's all good. But our value here, this dimension of our rectangle is actually increasing the further we are away from the origin. So if we're very close here, this width is very small. As we get further away, that width gets bigger, and it gets bigger and bigger as our radius increases. So the actual length of this rectangle is r times d theta. So we get dr times r times d theta, giving us the final result for our volume element of r d theta dr, as we convert from Cartesian to polar. All right, and then the most confusing one in spherical polar, the analog of this in three dimensions is we have from r to r plus dr, that's still just dr. From phi to phi plus d phi, that's going to be r d phi. That works just the same as theta did here in polar coordinates. And it turns out for theta, the, the width or the depth of that volume element is actually r times sine theta times d theta. So putting all three of these together, we get r squared times sine theta, dr, d theta, d phi. And that's our final volume element for integrating functions in spherical polar coordinates or polar coordinates relative to the same kind of Cartesian functions in two or three dimensions.